In Texas and across the nation, the emergence of Hispanics in positions of political power has been growing right along with the Hispanic population. KSAT 12's Brian Myler now with more on the extent of that growth, but also what's holding Hispanics back. Secretary of Housing and Urban Development Julian Castro is perhaps the most visible Hispanic politician recently to make it big after serving as San Antonio's mayor. Then there's Leticia Van de Pute running for Texas lieutenant governor. Both Democrats appeal to Hispanic voters, but Republicans are making an outreach as well. We have uh, the largest Hispanic population second to California. Uh, so uh, we are the test case, the model for the Republican Party. And Republican Hispanics are getting elected. Susana Martinez, governor of New Mexico. Republican Senators Ted Cruz of Texas and Marco Rubio of Florida. So if you want to be seen as an inclusive candidate, uh, you need to be seen as someone who reaches out to the Hispanic population. Getting Hispanics to vote is a challenge. Traditionally, Hispanics have a very low voter turnout rate. One organization, Mi Familia Vota, is changing that. They targeted Hispanic students at area colleges today, finding some whose parents never registered or voted. It's one thing you're registering, but you've got to get out to the polls. You've got to get out to the polls, people. A lot of the local elections affect us here locally, so I mean, it, it's a benefit. Jose Jimenez understands the power of the vote and that if more people like him went to the polls, there could be big changes. Brian Mylar, KSAT 12 News. Now, studies show that there are 3 million Hispanic Texans eligible to vote who have never registered. The general election is November 4th. And by the way, we do have a correction to a story we brought to you today at 5. Apparently, a convicted felon may actually vote if the sentence is complete, including any jail time, parole, supervision, or probation.